Today is February 15, 2006. We are interviewing Michael Toll of South Cairo, who served in the United States Army from November 1943 to April 1945. This interview is taking place in Albany, New York at 2.30 in the afternoon. The interview is being conducted by Kenneth and June Hunter. What is your full name and when and where were you born? My name is Michael Toll, uh, Michael F. Toll, uh, because my son is uh, Michael A. Toll. Uh, and I was born in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, I went in the service, as you know, uh, in uh, November of 43 and got out in April of 45. Okay, now what did you do before you went into the military service? I worked in a grocery store. <clears throat> and then were you, uh, did you enlist or were you drafted? Drafted. And where did you go for, uh, what was your feeling at the time you were drafted and where did you go? I went to Fort Dix, New Jersey and uh, I, I wanted to get in but my father wouldn't let me enlist, you know. He said, hey, just shut up and sit in the corner. You're not going any place, you know. But I come from a long line of military. My my uncles, my father, everybody was in the military, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you said you went to Fort Dix? Yeah. For your basic training, do you remember what that was like at all? Uh, that was not at Fort Dix. Oh. That was at uh, Camp Croft, Spartanburg, uh, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I took 17 weeks of basic training. Not too many uh, people get that, you know. It's now, uh, you know, for, it went from 17 weeks down to 12 and then 8. So now I think they just get about 8 weeks. Mm -hmm. What was the basic training like? Well, you, you did a lot of uh, hiking and uh, shooting. I fired all the infantry weapons. I fired the O3 rifle, M1, Browning automatic rifle, uh, light and heavy machine guns, mortars, and uh, I was I was a pretty good infantry soldier, you know. I didn't do anything. <laughs> but, well, you uh, must have had a good marksmanship. Yeah, I was. Uh, what was I? Uh, I wasn't an expert. What's a, oh, I was a sharpshooter. Yeah. All right. And then when you finished your basic training, where did you go? Uh, <clears throat> good question. Where the heck did I go? Well, if you don't remember, that's all right. How did you... You entered the war, and how... What How did you get over to the to Europe? To Europe. I went on one of those Liberty ships, 27 days on a Liberty ship, and I threw up every meal for 21 days. Mm. Uh, but uh, did you get on the ship at say the Brooklyn Navy Yard, Bayonne, New Jersey, or no? I think it was Newport News, uh, down Virginia. in Virginia. Yeah. And then, where did you land over there? Where did I land? <laughs> you went to Africa? Yeah, North Africa. Must have landed near Casablanca? No, Oran. Oran, okay. Yeah. I landed in Oran. In Algeria. And I looked out and I thought, looks just like Florida, you know? <laughs> Uh, when you were making the crossing, what were your duties on the ship? Do you remember what kind of work you did? Uh, you didn't do anything, you know. Oh, you didn't, okay. No. 
So once now that you're in North Africa, what did you do there? Do you remember? <clears throat> uh, just a little what uh, infantry training, you know. All right. Was there a period of combat at all there in Africa? Uh, the, the combat was over when I got there. Yeah. So what was the circumstance then that you, I assume from North Africa, you then went to Italy? Yeah. And How did you get to Italy? And what did they do there? I went on one of those uh, L LSTs. Mm -hmm. Landing ship tank. Or, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Across the Mediterranean. Right. Okay. Was a long length, a long voyage uh, in the LST. I forget. Not too, not too many days. You know, it's not that far. Mm -hmm. And then, what was it like when you got to Italy? I assume you entered into combat then. No, not right away. Uh, went to Naples and partied for a while. You know. Soldiers do that, you know. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> yeah. And well-deserved time off. <laughs> yeah. So then after you were in Naples, um, how did you end up getting into the uh, Italian campaign? <clears throat> well, I remember uh, they, we were all infantry replacements. So we went up in, uh, in boxcars initially, and uh, I think I mentioned that we were with two guys from the first special service force. Did Tell I us about this first special service force. That was, um, they were Canadians and Americans. They made a movie about them, very good movie. And uh, who the heck was in that movie? A well-known star. Uh, do you remember the name of the movie? I don't know. It's all right. That's okay. Mm. If you don't remember, that's all right. So it was made up of Canadians and British? Americans and Canadians. Mm -hmm. American, uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, What did they do? What was their job? Well, they were... The Canadians had been wounded and they were going back on the line. And we were going up for the first time. You know, and I always remember them saying to us, "Well, you guys will go in one of the infantry outfits. Uh, if you get in the 45th Oklahoma, that's a good outfit. 34th is a good outfit. But if you get in the 36th Texas, you're dead." That's what they told us, and we damn near wound up dead. You know. Well, you became a member of that. Uh, Texas. Yeah. yeah. We understand that that was that has a special distinction that unit. You mentioned earlier something about a tie to the chief of state, the president. Oh uh, yeah, the president is in the thirty sixth, but he's in the air corps part. I was infantry. And what makes the thirty sixth division of Texas? stand out what's important with the day? Their National Guard outfit. And so they feel that that's one you want to avoid because it's usually more open to danger and... Well I don't know about that but um, it didn't have a good reputation. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. So now we're in Italy and you've been chosen for that. Then what did you, you mentioned Monte Cassino and all too. How did you get into all this? Well, I was on the line at Monte Cassino and uh, the, the uh, we were supposed to make this river crossing, the Rapido River. And uh, we did that. It was, uh, scared the hell out of me. The, the banks were like this, you know. Steep banks. S yeah, so I, I slid down the near side and I crawled up the far side, you know. But um, So we, how did you cross the river? Were you able to swim, walk? No, uh, we across? were on on those uh, rafts, you know, mm -hmm. the... Uh, Rafted across the whole... No, mm -hmm. we didn't raft across. Uh, 
Pontoon bridges. They made okay. pontoon bridges. All right. So, is this where you first ran into combat and wartime? Is in this area? Yeah. And you said that it was known later that you found out that this was considered about the biggest massacre in World War II. Were you a part of that? Massacre time. Well, tell us about that battle for and at, what it was at like casino. for you. Tell tell you about what? Tell us about the battle there. The battle. What mm -hmm. happened is while you were there. What? what well, was it like? we were on this side of the river, and they started shelling us. You know, and that was the Germans. Yeah, and we hit the ground, and they shelled us for hours, and. Uh, then a voice in the darkness hollered, uh, withdraw. And we got on our feet and ran like hell. And we went back to our original foxholes. And uh, I was, I was with the, I was platoon runner. So I wound up with the uh, company commander. Don't ask me who he was. But, uh, Tell us what it was like, what a foxhole was like, and what it was like to be. Did you live in foxholes most of the time? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you dug as deep as you could get, you know. I had a great foxhole. The lieutenant dug it. I didn't dig it. He said to me, uh, Toll, you got to dig us a, a foxhole here. I said, Hey, lieutenant, I'm too busy. I said, you want a foxhole, you dig it. So he did, because he was scared. This lieutenant got washed out of the Air Corps. So uh, they should have put him in a, an office someplace, because he was much too frightened to be on the front line. Mm -hmm. But I don't know who he was. I don't but know. But that's who, so he dug it big enough for both of you then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had a beautiful hole. Well, I guess if you're scared, you can dig extra fast and deep. Well, he did it, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I told him to do it, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. He said, he thought since I was a private and he was a lieutenant, I was going to dig it, but I wasn't going to dig it. <laughs> so, how long were you there, you know? Uh, not too long. Uh, let's see. Everybody got called back there, and then they uh, regrouped then, and then uh, they must have uh, resupplied themselves uh, for th an advance. Yeah. Okay, and then what happened after that? Well, what happened at Casino, Mount, Monte, Monte Casino. Casino? Well, uh... I remember I was I was in a ditch for 13 hours and and uh, <clears throat> this uh, master sergeant was near me and he put up a white flag you know to surrender and I thought Americans never surrendered you know so I started hollering at him I said what are you crazy and uh, he thought I was going to shoot him and the lieutenant thought it Evidently, I didn't know they thought this, but uh, I had my rifle on my hand, and the lieutenant hollered, "Lay that rifle down, soldier." That's it. Uh, my next to last military command was fix bayonets, and uh, I fixed my bayonet. And I said, "Are we going to charge?" I thought we we're going to charge the Germans, you know. And the lieutenant says, "I don't know what we're going to do." So I thought, "Some lieutenant, he doesn't know what we're going to do." But um, so, did you surrender or charge? Uh, yeah, we surrendered. Five hundred of us. Mm -hmm. And then what? How happened? did the Germans uh, treat you uh, when you surrendered? Not bad. You know, they they weren't too bad. The, the guy that uh, I surrendered to was a nice guy. He was. Uh, 
he was very amused by me because first of all I was 18 and I could pass for 15 you know so uh, he was a nice guy I don't know who he was I don't know what happened to him did he speak English uh... no he as a matter of fact I was 13 hours in a ditch and I was thirsty so I said Wasser, Wasser. So he says, oh, sprechen Sie Deutsch? I said, nein. So he said, yeah, yeah, Sie sprechen Deutsch. So I said, yeah, nein, <laughs> Wasser, that's all. <laughs> I assume he gave you water. Uh, no, he gave me his canteen full of cold coffee. So I drank the whole thing. He was a nice guy. And what did they do after that? Did they uh, have you? 500 of you. 500 of you. Did they break you down into groups? Uh, did they yeah. have, Did they in inventory everything you had? Did they uh, make you turn no. things over? They just shoved this in box cars. A hundred. First, they put a hundred men in a car. And uh, I can remember very well that. Uh, we still had cigarettes. We were only prisoners a couple of days. So one guy took a match and struck it on his, the sole of his uh, shoe and the match went out. Struck another, match went out. A third, the match went out. Then some guy who was smart enough uh, knew that we had no oxygen left in this boxcar. And I always remember he hollered out, uh, Wir hab kein Luft in German. We have no air. And uh, the German soldier who was guarding us said, oh, You got plenty of air. So we smashed all the windows in the boxcar. And uh, they were amazed that we did that, you know. Who and, thought of, huh? who thought up to do that? I don't know. But once just some, uh, some just the enterprising the guy. Yep, and the rest of you did the same. That's right. Well, yeah. you were lucky there were windows in it. That's right. Yeah. Did they punish you for that act? Oh, no, no. Ooh. So then what happened? After? Scared the hell out of them. Yeah. Oh, mm hmm. Yeah. They put extra guards on you then? Yeah, or oh, they took us out of the boxcars then. Because a hundred men in a boxcar, you couldn't live. You know, you uh, there was no oxygen. What about feeding you there and giving you a, some, a drink, uh, something to drink for nourishment? Well, I got this uh, cold coffee from the guy that I surrendered to. Mm -hmm. But other than that, they didn't give us anything. So when they took you out from out of that, what happened then? Uh, well, then they marched us for few hours and they shoved this into um, trucks and uh, we're all in these trucks 50 men in a truck and the British RAF come over and strafed us and uh, they didn't know who we were they just saw German trucks and they strafed them so uh, we jumped out and then they saw we're in American uniforms and they stopped strafing us, you know. So after that, after the planes uh, left the area, the Germans herded you back into trucks or did you have to continue marching? Uh, trying to think. I think we, I think we marched for a while. Mm -hmm. And where did you eventually end up? Where was the prison camp? Well, the first one was uh, Stalag 4B. That was in West Saxony. Do you know where that is? Yes. That was a British camp. And they put us in there. And uh, the British gave us uh, Christmas parcels left over from Christmas time. They were all goodies, you know, they were all sweet, uh, you know, cakes and everything. And so fortunately, I was with somebody 
who said, don't eat. You're going to get awful sick if you eat. So I was smart enough. I didn't eat. I just took a, a mouthful. But guys gorged themselves and they threw up. Hundreds of guys threw up mm -hmm. all over the place. Because their stomachs weren't used to That's food. right. Stomachs had shrunk up mm -hmm. to, you know, something Is like that. Is that why they hate to get fruit cakes? Huh? <laughs> Is that why they have the jokes that fruit cake isn't good? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I take it then, the food that you got from uh, the Germans uh, was very meager, hardly anything. Yeah. Mm. Black bread and and water mostly. And where did you go after uh, Saxony? Did, you said that was the first camp. Yeah, and then we went up to um, East Prussia and went to an American prison camp, Stalag 2B. Now they have strictly, was it a mix of officers and enlisted or strictly enlisted? No, it was, they took all the officers away. And uh, was this in the winter time or what time of the year? January. It was a real cold and damp there or not? Yeah, cold, yeah. What What were the barracks like that you What did you sleep on? To? And... Well, they weren't too good, you know. They, I had frozen feet and frozen fingers and... No heat was supplied? No. And rations? Uh, we didn't get very much. And uh, were you, uh, when you were on, even from the time you were taken prisoner, was it a very scary situation? Did you worry about where they were taking you and what was going to happen? No, we didn't know what was going on, you know. Mm. Uh, at least I didn't. I was a kid, you know. I, right. was a, I was 18, you know. Did you look upon it as an adventure rather than a thing to be very scared of? Yeah, I think more of an adventure. An adventure. Yeah. Where are we going? Did you receive any news at all about how the war was progressing while in the prison camp? Not really. Were there any inspections made by the Red Cross? We hear, often hear that sometimes they would have an inspection. Movies would lead you to believe that they were always looking out the, for the welfare of the prisoners. No, they, they did make some inspections, but not much. What did you do in the prison camp? Did they have you do work or anything like that? <clears throat> uh, Oh, you mostly just lay around, you know. Did you have any sort of exercise or anything you could do? or So you were just sat around being bored? Yeah. You know, yeah, and worrying. Did the Germans have an awful lot of security at the prison camp? Towers and all around patrols, vicious dogs? Uh, no dogs where I was, but they had towers and barbed wire, but uh, they didn't really bother us, you know. What was your daily routine like? Uh, th would they wake you up at a certain time and you couldn't get to bed for until a certain time? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Got you up early in the morning. I mean, what did they do? Did they take in a, a, a regular roll call to make sure no one escaped? Yeah, they had roll calls. They, it was really just a count. They didn't take a roll call, per se. They just counted us. Did you have anyone uh, of, of your own that was in charge of uh, your group? Yeah, we had, uh, first of all, 900 rangers were captured eight days after me. And uh, they had a sergeant in the Rangers. He was a master sergeant named Ewald. He was also from Brooklyn. And uh, he was in charge of the Rangers and uh, he didn't bother us too much. But uh, he counted his Rangers. And, you know. Were the, I, I assume that there were prisoners there who became ill and so forth, were they offered any kind of medical treatment? Not really. I went in 
to the medics because I had, you know, all the frozen feet and hands and everything. And I asked them if they could help me, and they said, nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. What kind of, did they issue you clothing to wear in the prison camp? What was it like? Well, we had our uniforms, you know, we had, we came off the line and we were wearing winter uniforms. Mm -hmm. You had that same one set of a uh, uniform yeah. the, the, the whole time you were a prisoner. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Were you supplied anything to say to shave or to wash, or did they have an allotment if you could take a shower maybe once a month or so? Yeah, we could. Oh, the Germans uh, made you take a shower every week. They were terrified of. Um, what do you call it? Um, lice? Li oh, they were scared of lice. And uh, we had lots of, um, uh, not lice, um, oh, fleas. The, our beds were just sacks, you know, and they were full of fleas and they bit the hell out of us, you know. But uh, the Germans, ooh, they were terrified of lice. Because uh, you get, uh, what do you get from lice? Uh, uh, something very bad. Uh. Head lice. Huh? Head, head, head lice. Head and body and lice. It gets, in, it gets welts and all on, mm. on you and, yeah. and serious infection. Yeah, but the Germans gave us a shower once a week, a hot shower, and uh, they kept the lice off us. What about your clothes? Do they uh, give you an oh. opportunity to do any laundry, or did, were you? Oh yeah, they used to uh, they used to shove the the clothing in uh, uh, you know hot uh, big cauldron or so, a big tub. No, it was. Um, uh, like fumigated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They did that. You said about once a week or once a week. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, they were very strict about that. What was your, what were your barracks like? Could you describe them? What kind of a place to sleep or washroom, bed, bathroom, or so? Well, they were pretty crummy. You know, they went. How many men were, was it like a cabin or? A well, it was like, a, <clears throat> yeah, a cabin. It was. About how many people to a cabin? Well, they'd, they had, uh, they'd have a, like a cabin here and then they had a washroom in the middle, mm -hmm. another cabin. Sort of joined together like? Yeah. And if they served you food, how did they do that? What did they bring yeah. you? All you got was a crust of black bread and and water. And they they gave they issued it to you. Yeah. And so each one never knew what the size of the ration they were going to get. It was just a chunk of bread, mm -hmm. you know. And would you get that three times a day, or how oh, often no. did they feed you? Maybe once or twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Didn't get much to eat. So then you'd know what hunger felt like. Oh yes, I was well acquainted with do, hunger. Do they have a lot of men that uh, who died from starvation? No, I don't think so. You know, you don't die so easily from starvation. Uh, it's lack of water usually. Uh, yeah. Did they give you water, enough water, or was that limited? No, I think we got enough water. Drinking water. So how long were you in the prison camp? Were you assigned to any kind of work details? Uh, 19 months. And during that 19 months you were, you just sat in the barracks or did they put you on any kind of work detail? Uh, yeah, I worked on farms. When you worked on a farm, that was good. You ate well. Uh, we had plenty, plenty of potatoes and, and that. And but you still had to watch how much you ate so uh, you wouldn't get sick. Yeah, after 
After you got to go got over the initial uh, period, you know. So what was the work like on the farm? Well, it was hard work. Uh, what were you doing? Uh, the usual farming, you know, you digging potatoes. I dug a lot of potatoes. And you, did, would you have to prepare the ground for another crop? Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I know we dug potatoes uh, because in Germany that's a big thing, you know. Did you do any plowing or anything? No. Would it be by hand? Probably. All the everything was you had to dig and harvest them. Yeah, shovels. And what did they do with the potatoes? Did did you have a chance to uh, steal to them. put some away to hide them or? Oh yeah, I we used to steal them like crazy. Uh, we would steal fifty pounds at a time, you know. And how did you do that? Well. Uh, they had a barracks full of potatoes and we used to go in the barracks and go down in the cellar and fill up sacks 50 pounds at a time with potatoes and, and take them out. And no one, none of the Germans stopped you from doing that? Well, they were marching around the outside of the barracks and uh, we said uh, to the Germans, uh, you know, we're going to take a bunch of potatoes. And they said, oh, you can't do that. So we said, uh, well, we'll, you know, you don't have to look. You, you don't have to see. And they said, oh, the sergeant says we got to see. But we stole them. And on farms, we ate well. Did they punish any? Did they make an example of anyone that stole potatoes? No. Uh, well, they did. They, if for every potato you stole, they they put you on uh, bread and water. But uh, they didn't catch us too much. So they didn't inspect the barracks or places where you could hide the potatoes. No, we used to dig them underneath the barracks and hide them. And then how did you prepare them if you ate them? Did you just rinse them off and eat them raw or what? No, we we shoved them in hot water and boiled them. And then did you have to eat those on the sneak? Or? Mm, no, not really. You could... Potatoes were plentiful, you know. Mm -hmm. So you'd boil them up and cook them and the guards would know and they just yeah, Didn't they. Care. No, there was plenty. When you were on a farm, there was plenty to eat. Mm -hmm. So, how long were you on this farm? Well, I was on a couple of farms. Uh huh. You know. And it was all mainly in the harvesting of potatoes at these farms. Yeah, to a great extent. Yeah. Okay. So now, while you're at the the prison uh, camps. How did you eventually get freed? Were you liberated by American troops or British troops? No, uh, we were working in the forests and uh, we headed for what we thought were the American lines and uh, we made two days march. With Germans as guards? or Well, we had five German guards with us and 27 Americans, 37 Americans, and uh, the they, Germans were marching you in that direction? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did they give you any reason why they were marching you, that they didn't know that there was a British over there? Uh, no, we didn't know. Uh, they were just trying to get away from the Russians. Could you hear uh, and from the distance, sounds of combat, the Russian advance. No, they were a little too far away from us. So what happened then as uh, you're marching along with the five German guards? Mm. Did you all stay together as a group or did you split off to make your escape? Well, we 
uh, myself, I, I tried to get the other 37 guys to go with me, but in, in the dark, they refused to go. They said, we're going to get shot in the dark, we're not going. So I said, well, I'm going, I'm not stopping. I said, one guy go with me and I'll bring back an escort for the rest of the guys. So no one would go except one of the German guards. He was the, he was in charge of the guard, an Unteroffizier. And he said, I'll go with you. We stole two bicycles and we headed for what we thought were the American lines. Turned out to be British paratroopers. And uh, you know how the Brits are, they said, oh, good show, congratulations, old chap. Ooh. Escaped, eh? Hmm? How did they treat your uh, German escort? Oh, well, they said, who's this chap? So I said, oh, he's a good guy. He, he helped me get away. They said, oh, yeah? So they said to uh, two British paratroopers, they were all paratroops. They said to these British paratroopers, uh, take, uh, take this guy, you know, in tow. And uh, these guys said, uh, we want to go to sleep. Uh, do you think you'll slit our throats when we go to sleep? I said, well, I no guarantees, but I said, I don't think so. So I said, well, we'll chance it, you know. Limey's are pretty cool, you know. Mm -hmm. So then what happened? So did did you tell them about the other 37, the other 36 that remained behind or? Well, uh, I went, I got through to the, what I thought was the American lines, turned out to be Brits. And uh, I, I went in and reported to some British captain and uh, he congratulated me. And uh, I'm trying to bring it back. Uh, he hooked you up with an American unit? No, what he did was I said, Can you give me an escort to go back to pick up the other Americans? So they said, Oh, certainly. I, I think they give me 10 men or 20 mm -hmm. men or something. So instead of that, uh, this British captain says, Dennis, you go with him. One guy, you know, this guy, Dennis Canavan. Well, I don't think these guys had been in combat. Dennis was so thrilled to get in with me. He thought I knew everything I was doing. And I, I went back with him towards where I left the Americans and uh, See. You couldn't find any trace of them at all? Oh no, I I went back and uh, let's see uh, myself and Dennis oh uh, it's coming back we're marching up this road the two of us and we see two guys coming down the road with a white flag, uh, German paratroopers, and they said they had orders from, first I start talking my pigeon German, you know, and uh, then this one guy starts talking perfect English, turned out he was a priest in a parish in New York City for 10 years, so he spoke perfect English. And uh, we went back with him, and uh, we wind up in the, on the same farm as we left the Americans. And they were hiding in the hayloft when the German paratroops marched in. And uh, they said, oh, we should have gone with Toll. But uh, they didn't think I was going to come back. Mm -hmm. 
So you came back, and were you able to get them out of there? Or? Yeah, I uh, with 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 just one British. Uh, well, oh, one British paratrooper, and I had forty-five or fifty German paratroops, and uh, and thirty-seven Americans, and I marched almost a hundred men back to the British lines, and we had a truck, a huge German truck. We got the 37 Americans in that truck. That's how big it was, you know. And then you, where'd you go with all of them? They must have been very pleased. When you came, where did you go then? Where'd you take the truck? We took it, uh, oh, to the 8th Division, the 8th American Division. And uh, we hooked up with them. How are you treated when you got to the American lines? Oh, very well. You know, you know how GIs are. How did they identify who you were and that it wasn't a trick? Hey, with my accent and, you know, the way we talk, um, they didn't question me. Do they issue you new clothing, uh, check yeah. your health and... Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. How? What did they? Uh, were they careful in giving you food so the people could gradually come back to normal? Uh, well, we knew enough by that time not to eat too much, you know. So then, what happened uh, there? How much time did you spend at the American camp, and where did you go from there? <clears throat> uh. Do they send you to a field hospital? No. Up to a, a rear into a rear area? Uh, no, they shoved me in the 30th Infantry Division. I thought I was finished with the war, and they put me in the 30th Infantry Division. And I said, "Geez, I thought I was finished, but I wasn't finished." And then. You know, bringing it back is uh, kind of tough. Sixty years, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you also mentioned, I guess, after you uh, left, that the Combat Infantry Medal that you received was one of the first ones ever awarded. Yeah, I didn't know I had it until after the war was over, and I see it on my discharge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you were discharged, uh, you got out of the Army before the war ended. What was the circumstance of that in April? And I think the war ended in May. Yeah. So you, you were sent back to the States early? Uh, yeah. So where did they, where were you released from? What? place were you in when you got out, discharged? It was on the East Coast? Uh, you don't remember. You know, I have no idea. That's okay. I can't remember. All right. So, when you got out, um, what did you do then? You, you mentioned to us that uh, you eventually hooked up with the New York City Police Department. How did that occur? Well, I took the uh, physical, and having worked on farms, I was strong as an ox, and uh, I, I took the, uh, the physical, and then I took the medical. I, I got on the scale, and the doctor puts me on, and he says, oh, 147 pounds. You can't come in this job at that weight. I said, hey, Doc, I just got out of prison camp. He said, oh, that's different. Hmm. So did they send you, give you special training with the police department? Uh, uh, well, you went to... An academy? Yeah. Uh, well, we consider an academy today. Yeah. And did, what, uh, when you got out of the service, is this something you decided you'd like to do, or was it just an opportunity you tried out for? 
to be a policeman? Had that been something you wanted to do, or? Well, a test came up, so I took it. And Just a job that was available. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you know, we thought, I remember when I went in the police department, I got $57 twice a month, not, not every two mm -hmm. weeks, twice a month. That's not as good as every two weeks. Right. So, uh, you know, it was enough money, and uh, I was still down south, and I was, uh, where the heck was I? I know I was with five guys from Panama, and these guys had beautiful tans. They were down there for years. Mm -hmm. The girls were nuts about them, you know, with these beautiful tans. And, mm -hmm. And they were all staff sergeants and everything, you know. And uh, one guy hooked up with me, liked me, and uh, I remember we used to go in a place called Mars Tavern, outside of um, uh, I guess it was outside of Spartanburg, and. Uh, I remember I was in the tavern and somebody says, hey, uh, they're beating the hell out of your buddy out there in the, in the yard. So I run out and there's six guys beating them up. So I go out and as I say, I was strong as a bull. I hit one guy, he goes down. I hit another guy, he goes down. I thought they were going to fight me. There were six of them, you know. They all ran away, you know. Now you mentioned Spartanburg. I, so did you go you, in? You had New York City. Yeah. You, you went into the police first in Spartansburg, South Carolina? Oh, no, no, no. And well, how did you get to Spartansburg? Well, I was still in the service. Then. Oh, I see. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah then. All right. Then in the New York City Police Department, uh, what kind of a duty did you have? Did you have routine street patrol? Yeah. What was it well, like? Well, I, I went on uh, mounted duty, oh, horseback, for 19 years. Oh, they teach you how to ride a horse and Oh, everything? I could ride. I was good on a horse. Mm -hmm. I could ride better than I could walk. Where did you learn horseback riding? When I was a little kid. Oh. In Keensburg, New Jersey. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. So how long were you on the New York City Police Department? 37 years. And did, what did you retire as? Lieutenant. Uh, what were, Did you have any special kinds of incidents that might have stood out uh, in the police department? I got beat up good for a couple of times, especially one time uh, I got in a fight with a guy and this guy had 20 inch biceps. And uh, he beat the hell out of me. I was in perfect shape at 175, and he was in perfect shape at 235. So you can imagine what a beating I took. He broke my nose, knocked a couple of fillings out of my teeth and everything. And uh, I managed to subdue him, you know. Uh, and he turned out to be a pretty decent kind of a guy. Like people were hollering. This was in front of the Americana Hotel in, in Manhattan. And uh, people were hollering, shoot him, shoot him. He's a mad dog. I heard that at least 10 times, you know. So I psychoed him. Uh, and when I picked him up after 30 days, he says, who are you? I said, I'm the guy that locked you up. He said, how come you didn't shoot me? I said, I didn't want to. He said, I want to thank you. So he wasn't a bad guy. He, mm -hmm. His excuse was that he was drunk. He, he had, um, what did he have? Uh, one of those diseases. Um, Schizophrenia? No, no. Uh, what the heck? Bipolar? And no, it wasn't. Uh, oh, no. It was just a temporary thing. Uh, oh, um, like um, epilepsy or no. temporary insanity, we would call it. 
Mm. Don't ask me. Did you ever follow him after? Do you ever uh, go a straight line after that or not? Did I ever what? Did you see? Do you know if he ever, did he tow a straight line after that or did he do it off and on go bad? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I never, I lost track of him. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever had any occasion to attend a reunion with your old units, any survivors? No. In fact, somebody was talking about they got a POW thing mm -hmm. here. And I said, I didn't even know that, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, now I assume that your work in the military helped you in your job as a policeman. Yeah, I would say so. And that's helped you a lot. And uh, did you do anything else uh, after the service besides police work? Did you do any work, uh, voluntary work? Or retired. Retired, and uh, now you're, you've moved uh, away from the city. And yeah. And, and family's up here, so yeah. you're up okay. here with family. Well, we thank you very much for sharing this oh, time with us. I'm glad. I hope I, I did you some good, you yes. know. Mm -hmm. Thank you.